Welcome to this talk on practical lambda calculus. I am Einar and this is Jonas. Hello. I think I turned my mic. It's a good th uh, thing that, uh, that you clap before the talk. Uh, so we so uh, I think, yeah, there, there's the author. Uh, I think um, there are some talks about lambda calculus, but it's usually from a theoretical perspective, uh, which is kind of uh, then a challenge for, for the enterprise programmer who comes back to work convinced that lambda calculus is the way to go, but has sort of no no practical means of doing so. Uh, for instance, there are very few IDEs that support Lambda calculus natively. Uh, so to correct that, uh, Jonas has made one. So, yeah, so the GitHub repo is here with some instructions. Uh, so this can kind of set up Emacs to be a Lambda machine. And we started by evaluating stack lab. And it says meep, meep, meep. Right, so maybe we should say this is now Emacs, and then you have uh, something standard so ML. Some standard thing. ML running in the background uh, right. with a Lambda interpreter, and we can, and there's a bunch of instructions, and we can. Right, so if, if you sort of want to type along, you can, I suppose, go to the GitHub repo and <laughs> download it and stuff. But So at this point, we can do things like this, and it will evaluate right. it for us. So that was, okay, hooray. Uh, what happened there, though? So we wrote not entirely uh, clear. I think lambda expression, uh, right. lambda f dot f, which means that f is the parameter, right? And f is the function body. Uh, it might be uh, convenient to sort of repeat the rules of the lambda calculus at this point. Uh, so the lambda calculus is is very simple. Yeah, it kind of has three parts that you build expressions from. Right. Uh, so we have uh, variable references. Uh, which looks like you know, an X or an F or yeah. a longer word. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have lambda abst ex abstractions. Right, so, so that would be your function. Yeah, so these are kind of anonymous functions. Right. Mm. And then you have a third rule. Uh, function applications. Right. And then you have like two expressions, uh, which right. means you call this function with this argument. Okay, so that's that's very simple, and then you have a computation rule which says what? So if you have a lambda abstraction, and that is the function part of an application, right? You can take the function body like this, and you replace every occurrence of this parameter variable, the x, within this expression. Uh, okay, that's a little bit abstract, so maybe we should we should look at an, uh, another example, I think. Yes, yeah, so we have like a kind of simple example here. Uh, so we do lambda a, lambda b, lambda c. Right. Uh, so, so that would be three functions? So it's a function that returns a function that returns a function right, that yeah. returns a function. Uh, we can think of it as a function taking three arguments. Yeah, but, but in reality it's like single argument functions. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we can see how it works down here. We kind of pass the foo into the first lambda. Right. And then we replace all the a's in here. So this a is replaced with this foo. That would be all the a's. Yeah. And then we pass the bar into the b. Yeah, but you have no b's, right? Yeah, so nothing happens. You can just kind of strip off the lambda b bit. Right. And we pass the quarks into mm -hmm. the lambda c. So all the c's are replaced right. with. Works. And at this point, you're done? Yeah, so now we get this. Uh, it evaluates down to this expression here. Which is uh, very useful. Uh, yes. Which is better or worse or equivalent right. to the one we started uh, with. But uh, I was sort of noticing that um, in most programming languages, you have like a concept of data, which is like, for instance, numbers or strings or booleans or whatever, which seems to be missing from the picture. Yeah, so we, people were here for the first keynote yesterday. Uh, there were some slides along the lines of like who needs booleans and who needs integers. Uh, most programmers, but yeah. So we stole okay. those slides. Uh, right, so a boolean it just makes a choice, it says. Yeah, and you see this is kind of the Haskell syntax for it. Mm -hmm. It says that if you have a true function that takes two arguments, we... Okay, so you choose one or the other. return the first one, false should return the second one. Right, so this is similar to... Like if then uh, else. So we have slightly different syntax, so we make 
true, and we say that true. What's the what's the party hat? Uh, so the hat is like fancy equals, I think. Okay, good. It's like definitional equality or something. Okay, right. Uh, so, so this is kind of built on top of the pure lambda calculus. So, right. So, so this can, is not part of the rules so you showed. It's kind you. of a macro preprocessor. Okay. To make it so we don't have to copy paste all the lambda expressions all over the place. Right. Okay. So I can do. Uh, Lambda x dot lambda y x. Right. So now, so now true is just shorthand for this other expression, yeah, right? Yeah. And now I can write, you know, some expression lambda x true, and I can hit a key to replace true with right. Yeah. Okay. What I wrote here, so I don't have to write all the lambdas all the time. Right. So this is I just can, shorthand. Yeah. Right. Uh, they are not like. Uh, top-level variables or anything. No, I right. can't refer to... It's not really part of the lambda calculus. Yeah, so right. I'm not allowed to do stuff like this and refer back to true within the definition. Right, so it's not really defining a name that you can use inside lambda calculus, right? Yeah, so if I do like... Uh, something like this. It doesn't make sense. Uh, it's like happy and I can replace it with this and I can replace it again if I want, but if I start evaluating it, I... Okay, I didn't understand that, but yeah. it's fine. Uh, so maybe we, we should that. just move on. So you can define if then else now. Yeah, we want false as well. So false oh, okay. should be equal to uh, lambda. It's halfway to booleans. Yeah. Uh, so we can try them out. We can do true. We have like a then part and an else part. The true is going to choose the then part then. It should do that. Okay. Is it passes then into? This and all the x's become stands, and all the y's become else. Right, so a boolean is really just a, sort of a choicey thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, false then else. Does it's going to choose one. the else. Okay, yeah. excellent. And so now you have. Yeah, so in the keynote they show that then you can make an if then else thing, and all it does is R really pass its argument to its argument. It's kind of confusing that you're passing arguments to a boolean, but still, uh, we can work with that, I think. So, lambda bool, lambda t, lambda e. Right, the t would be the then. Then else. Right. So, this is kind of. It's smiling, so that's that good. John used did yesterday. Uh, right. But it's slightly different syntax. So, the function application part is the same, but we have like lambdas instead of slashes. And okay, excellent. And so, now right. we have booleans. Uh, what about numbers? Do we have numbers also? Yeah, so we had like these slides. Uh, right. It makes it simpler when in the talks. Uh, before yeah, I, I, I think he sort of did order. our talk in five minutes. Yeah, so uh, that makes it easier for us. Yeah. Uh, I can't write. Uh, so two should be this. Right, so it's two because there are two Fs, is that correct? Yeah, so the function body has like two Fs. Right. Um, Oh, I, and we don't. So we don't have like proper integers built. But so in. we're we're really just pretending like, that this is going to be two, right? So I get to use like two as a name here instead. So I'll do like. All right, this. but that's just a shorthand again. That's yeah. just your macro. Yeah. So I'll use a shorter shorthand. Right. Uh, lambda f, lambda x. So it's just going to be like an, a conventional interpretation of this lambda expression, really, right? So there's nothing particularly numbery about it. Is that correct? Well, if you count the f's in the function body, you get a number. Sure, <laughs> but yeah, well, okay. Uh, good, uh, so mm, I think the, the interesting thing to sort of convince yourself that these are useful as numbers is that they can behave like numbers, right? Yeah, so uh, in the keynote, they also showed like how to get back to normal integers, but we don't have normal integers. Right, so, so that's not going to work so well. So we can, but we can do like count matches and see how many Fs there are. Oh, there are two Fs, so that must be two. It to okay. the number two. Uh, Excellent. Uh, how about, uh, what's that? Auxiliaries? Yeah, we can so like do that for later. Oh, okay. Uh, so, but we maybe want to be able to do numbered things, like addition? Like, uh, yeah, addition is, uh, so is useful. Yeah, so we'll the simplest case for addition would be to plus one, right? Yeah, so we want like a successor function which we'll call s, and it should take a number and return something. 
Yeah, it should return something that's one larger than that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that you can add an f. Is that numbers correct? look like you know lambda f lambda x something? Uh, uh, I suppose yes. Yeah, clearly. So so all numbers are going to start with uh, lambda f lambda x, right? Yeah. And then something. So we have some number passed in here, the okay. n. That's going to be the number. And then you're going to construct a new number, is that correct? Yeah, and since, so this is kind of the follow the types kind of programming. Since we know that number is a function. I thought it was untyped lambda calculus. Well, everything is a function, so we know what, which type it is. So oh. everything is like <laughs> some kind of function, right? Yeah. So okay. if you have an n, it's, it better be a function. Yeah, and the only true. thing you can do is call it. Yeah, uh, but now you're, this is now your number, is that correct? The yeah, the n is a number. And then you're passing things to the number? Yeah, f's and x's. Which, right. okay, you're passing a function to a function, well, yeah, okay. So if, uh, so if this is our successor function, and yeah. we do like successor two, uh, we get two back. Uh, yeah. Which is but that, that's, that's sort of disappointing, because it's supposed to be one larger, it should be like one more f, right? Yeah, but it's like an off by one error, so that's basically software engineering. Yeah, it's, it's pretty close to the right but answer, but... We, we could, like, throw in an additional f. Uh, it's like patching. And, uh, and now we have three f's, right? Three f's in the result. Right. Now, if, what if you do, like, successor of successor of successor of two or something? Can you do that? So, successor of successor of successor of... I don't know how many times I said it, but... And that would be one, two, three, four, five. Is that correct? Three times larger than, okay, excellent. Hi. Uh, Very good. So now you, I'm convinced now that this is. Yes, I know how to get like uh, one larger. Right. Uh, an addition should then just be like, do one larger a bunch. Yes, as many times as you sh should need to, right? Yeah, until you've added two things together. Right. So we want like a plus function, which takes two numbers. Right. Now, I, I, I'm thinking that these numbers are, are looking a bit like these, you know, these Russian dolls, uh, where you have this smallest doll, which is like the zero, and then you have like yeah. bigger dolls on top. So if you have like three outer dolls, that would be the number three. Is that correct? Yeah, you can think of it like that. Yeah. And then I think it would be a neat trick if you could sort of, uh, Addition would be really simple if you could replace the smallest doll with just the other, with entire other doll, and then they have a bigger doll. Yeah, that makes like a bunch of sense for Russian dolls. Right. So if if they're like elastic. Yeah. Uh, so, so the idea is that we can replace all these f's with whatever with whatever we like. Yeah. And there are as many f's as. Uh, as successor calls is that. Correct? In a sense, yeah. yeah. So if it's three more than zero, there should be three yeah. f's. Right. So if we call one of the numbers and throw in an s, then... Right, so, you're, so what you're saying is you're replacing the f's with the successor function? Yeah, so you can think of it like we have this number that's successor of successor of successor of zero. Right. And we can replace, if we replace all the f's within this function, it works out like replacing all the s's in this expression. Okay, I think I'm sort of following. So uh, if we replace all the s's with and now you're just and the zero with zero, we should this get would the give same you a, back. Yeah. right? So that would be a. So we can do like two one, and it should be two because it's just the same number. Yeah, and at this point it's still enough by one error, but if you add larger numbers, it's a larger mm -hmm. error. Yeah, okay. Uh, maybe you should just replace it with something other than zero in the... So if you throw the B in, right. it should be kind of A more than B. Yes. So now you're taking all these sort of outer shells from the A Russian doll and putting it on top of the B Russian doll. Is that correct? Sure. Yeah, good. Uh, and we got and now we have three. three Excellent. Uh, can you do like uh, slightly larger numbers? Can do... It's slightly larger. Which would be now five, is that correct? Yeah, One, two, hopefully. Two, three, four, five, okay. Good. Great. You can keep this for later. It's, it's good to hold on to those numbers because then you can use them. Right. 
Oh, let's do it like this instead. Uh, oh, that's 10. That yeah, 10. excellent. 10 is one of the more useful numbers. Can you just count them to make sure that it's really 10? Because so 10 Excellent. Is. Good. Good. 10 is going to be useful, I think. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't oh. find that much more stuff to steal from the slides yesterday, but right. we're going to do the, is the zero check function. So that should take a number and say true if it is We can make zero. it a zero function, and we want it to return true. And true is the function that takes two arguments and returns its first argument. Yeah, right. Uh, so it should take a number. And as you see, it, we just called the number. We applied the number to some arguments. Right. Uh, and we don't care about this argument, because right. if it's more than zero, this function will. And then it's just going to be false, right? Yeah. And then otherwise it's going to be true. Yeah, so we can replace the zero with true. Right. And can you test it on some numbers, like some unit tests or something? Oh, I did There. Zero, two. Right. And, we and get that's, the, that's the false expression, right? Because it chooses the, yeah. the second. So if we do like, yeah. uh, then else, this is the expression that picks out else. Yes. Now for zero, it should it better answer something else. Yeah, hopefully. So uh, it's going to be the lambda x, lambda y, and x, right? Yes. Yeah. So perfect. That seems uh, now we have two tests, so it must be correct. Sure. Uh, um, I'm thinking now we can add, so we can make numbers larger. Can we make numbers smaller as well? Because that's we can also. make them super large at first. And oh right, yes. Uh, so the kind of next step, which is like super addition, uh, which would be multiplication. Yes. Yeah. So we'll uh -huh. take a couple of arguments. And those are going to be numbers now, right? Yeah. So they're functions you can call with two arguments to them. Yeah, right. Uh, so you can take one of the numbers and kind of replace the successor function with something. Um, okay, what's the something going to be? Well, we would like to add the number b as many times as the number a. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's... So if you do like plus b and do that a times. Right, so you're going to plus together b a times. Is that yeah. correct? Yes. So hopefully. Right. Can you try with some of the... Oh, that's a very big number. It's the largest natural number, if it right. works out. Right. So maybe you should <laughs> verify by counting the Fs. Oh, that's 100 Fs, so it must be 100. Excellent. It's the largest. Excellent. I know uh, of, at least. Yeah. Uh, that was very easy once you had add. Right. Yeah, so just... So adding is just like kind of taking a successor a bunch and then... It's not, it might be not, not be entirely clear why it works, though. Why does it work? Uh, because code matches itself. Right, yes, yeah. okay. Uh, but we did like... So when we multiplied 10 and 10, right. we added 10, 10 times. Right, so you had a function that added 10, so 10. So if we really look at this right. again. Yeah. OK, I think I'm getting it. So instead of doing like plus 1, you're going to do plus oh, A, plus right? Everything. Yeah, so kind of 10, 10 works out to something along the line. So you know, we take the number 10, yeah. and we apply it to plus 10. Right, yes. And we replace zero with zero. So we start at zero yeah. and we count up in kind of counts of 10. Right. It's a very efficient way of adding. Very efficient. Uh, yeah. Use, we're at line 600. But some yeah. of those lines were like earlier expressions. So yeah. Uh, and we could okay. like not print all the lines and it would look like really fast. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's nice. Um, so I guess like the next part is trying to do like one less. One less, yes. That should be comparably easy to so one more, right? You'd think it would be like exactly like one more just with less instead of more. Yes. Yeah. So why is it not? 
uh, so we have this idea from earlier that kind of the thing we can do is to apply this number to something, and then right. we replace all the s's with something. Right. And, and it's uh, not like obvious what you want to replace the s's with in right. order to so end you, up with fewer s's. Right. You would like to replace the last s with something else yeah. than all the other s's, right? So the kind of off by one variant is pretty easy to get. Uh, Sorry? This is so, let's see here. You're trying so to do subtraction now, right? Yeah, Minus so one. this is like the number three, and we can evaluate it by... And this is still the number three. three. Yeah, right. so, so that bit is easy. Yeah. Uh, so and that's that like, oh. so off by one is Surprisingly easy. Yeah, okay. Uh, so how about fixing it so that it's not off by one so anymore? So we want to kind of lose an S or something like that. Slide. Right. Yeah, so we, yeah. Ooh. So there are like multiple ways to do it. And I think sort of the way that might be easiest to understand is that we want to do this kind of counting back up to the original number. But then we want to keep the second last. Okay, so you're going to need a data structure to do that, right? Yes, we want to count up and keep track of like which number was the last one we used. So it's like a hack, almost. Something along those lines. Yeah. So we want to do kind of instead of counting like zero, one, two, three, we want this yeah. like some data structure which holds two numbers. And we want oh, to that's count very clever. One, two, three, and keep. Right, because then you can the other number for later. Right. Well, later would be when you want to sort of so when give the count it up final to the answer. original number. You can, and then you can get say, the other "Aha! One. I have this also." Right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so then you need these data structures, these pairs, right? Pairs. So. And a pair is going to be something with a function. I, I suspect. Yeah, and it needs to take two arguments. Right. Uh, and then and it's going it to return something return that. A function. It's going to return a function, and that function better behave like a pair then. And what is a pair? So, I think a pair is something that you can take the first so part of. And the, the obvious rest. idea is to write fab because it's like that's fabulous. Yes, uh, and it should like work out as well. Okay. So well, why is this going to be a pair? That takes a function and applies that function to the two arguments you pass to the pair. Ah, right, and then you can sort of either return the A or the B, right? Yeah. Which be... Okay. So, we can show what happens if we apply it to foo and bar. Uh, we get... Right, so you have a function right. and those two values that... It, and this F could choose between these, right? Yeah, so if we pass in another function now, we can pick out foo or pick out bar. In right, so you could create a first or sec uh, and second. So function, I suppose. So now this function kind of holds on to foo and bar for us, and mm -hmm. we can pass another function in. Uh, and if this picks out, if is that argument, true? Is that the true function? Looks a lot, lot like true, but we used x and y in true. Right, but <laughs> uh, yeah, which is equivalent, I guess. But right, but it's it's a very useful lambda expression, and you can uh, sort of use it for different things, I suppose. Yeah. So here we see that this uh, function, which is not true, but kind of our picker function that picks out right. an element of a pair, uh, the f here is replaced with that yeah. function. Right. And then foo and bar is passed to it. Yeah. And it returns its first argument. So we, we're left with foo. Right. So you could pass the function that's not false to get the second argument. Is that right? Yeah, so it should work. Uh, like, which is like suspiciously similar to false, but using different yeah letters. Yes. Then we'd get bar back. Right. So that would be the second. Yeah. So if we wrap this up in a function again, mm -hmm. uh, we can make like a first function that takes a pair and picks out the first yep. element. Uh, so we need to apply this to the lambda a lambda b b. A function. Yes. And the second function should be the same, but pick up the other element. And I lambda b b. Right. And and the reason we're doing this is still that we're trying to subtract by one, right? Yeah. Okay. 
just just making sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, we're, we're not losing track of that one. Right, okay. Uh, uh, and we can do like second au pair foo bar, and it should pick out the bar. bar. Right, yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, so now we need, I suppose, this count up of pairs. Yeah, function, so we right? want to like, instead of, so we have this number with a bunch of successors, and instead right. of counting up with successors, yeah. we need some function that kind of takes a pair and counts up the first element and copies right, yes. uh, and the old number right. to the second element. Yes. Uh, so, we can do the slide again. Uh, so, we want right. this, the function that kind of right. takes something like this and turns it into this, or takes something like this uh, and turns it into this. Yes. Uh, so, we can call it, it's a helper function, for so we call it help. Right. Uh, and it takes it takes a pair probably, and then it. And we want to construct a new pair. Yes. Uh, and we'll take the successor of the first part. Of the original pair, and then just pair. the first and part. Then we'll take right, the first yes. part without incrementing it for the. Right. So now we're part. losing the second part in some sense because we're not interested in in it when we're just counting up, right? Yeah. So we can. Try it, making a pair of zeros. Yes. Uh, so we should have now a pair, which, right, so this would be the number one and this would be the number zero. Yeah. Okay, perfect. And you can call it a bunch of times. So if you call it three times, we should somehow be able to pick out the number two later, right? Yeah, we should have now three and two as a pair, right? Is that correct? So, yeah. And do we? Now that's the number three and the number two. Perfect. Yeah. So now if you could just so now we pick just out the second one. Yeah, so we could. So the idea is that we take the second one of this. Right. And, and that would be number, number two. two. So we just need to kind of wrap this up in a function. Yes. The predecessor function, which takes a number. Yes. Uh, want to count up using the help, helper function. Right, so now you're passing the helper function to the number, right? Replacing the successor the with uh, with a helper function? Yeah. And instead of zero, we start at the pair containing zero. Right, so you're re replacing the zero with a with a zero, zero pair. Yeah. Okay. We can do like predecessor 10. Well, this is not going to be the perfect predecessor function, I think. It's pretty perfect. But you're not picking out the second element, are you? Oh, right. So it's... So it's almost perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we forgot that we want like only this bit. Yes. Uh, exactly. Not the whole pair. Right. Uh, so predecessor. Right. You're going to want the second from that. The second element instead. Yes. It's twice as happy. It was happier before also. Yes. Yeah, but it's more happy now since there's two smileys. Yes. Uh, what was the number we started with? Started at 10. And now we have one, two, three, four, five. So can you just count them? It's, it's more convenient. Nine. Nine. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. So now we have the, the predecessor. And we can we generalize can. that? Yes, yeah, so we can or? do subtraction. Uh, subtraction. So subtraction. Uh, Say you wanted to subtract like 100 and then subtract 10. Let's do that at the end of the talk in case everything breaks down. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so maybe we should implement it first. Yeah, because it seems you would need to count up all the time. So maybe it's not terribly efficient. Yeah, so uh, we're going to implement subtraction kind of like we did with uh, addition. Yes. So we're saying that like B times we want to do the predecessor function. Take the right. predecessor right. and start at A. So we start at A right. and B number of times to take one less. Yes, because B is the number you want to subtract. So if you do like 10 minus 2. Right. So you're going to do the predecessor line. two times on the number 10. Yeah. Right. Which, and as you were getting to, that also means it kind of counts up to the number 
Yeah, so it counts up to 10, and then it counts up to 9, and then it and picks then it out picks the out eight. Yeah, yeah. Right, yes. So it's not the most efficient. Um, right. Can I get the but it's correct, right? Yeah. So, so it works. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and since we started with the pair of 0, 0, like if we. Right. Mm. Event and oh, that's just... probably not going to work so well. It's going to be zero, probably. Yeah, which yeah, is so... like the closest natural number to the correct one. Yeah. I guess. Two minus ten is zero. That's fine. Yeah. Ah. Mm. So. Right. Yeah, I think we kind so of. Now we have booleans and numbers and a little bit of arithmetic. I don't think we're going to do division. No, we will skip that one. Yes, it, it's. it's <laughs> I think it's left as an exercise for the reader. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. So what else can we do? So we have some stuff on lists. Right. Uh, lists are nice. I think we have like slides, uh, right. which shows that lists are a lot like numbers. Lists are kind of similar to numbers because it has the same structure, right? Almost. So, yeah, but you have these things, yeah. which are like the list elements so that you need to keep on to. Uh, yeah, so numbers are list without junk in them. Yes. Yeah. Right. So they're very much similar. So cons is kind of like successor, and this nil empty list thing is kind of like the number zero. Right. So we have list. All this stuff in the middle. Right. So list has things and a sort of a count of things, but the number has just a count of things or something. Yeah, just a count of, I guess. A count of no things. Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, yeah, so we want something along the lines of numbers, but with more stuff. Uh, and we yeah. want to build kind of the constructors, which should be the... So you need a cons. Yeah, we need like the empty list, which we'll call nil. Right. Uh, That's sort of similar to zero. It plays the same role yeah. as zero. So we'll just write the zero function, but with different names. All right. Now it's suddenly nil because you're using different it letters. It also looks a little bit like false, I guess. Yeah. That's, uh, that's true. So if... If you take like, a close look at it, it, it does call, like the C is called zero times on N. Yeah. Uh, if it was a number, then the number one would be like lambda C, lambda N, and it would call it one time on N. What are you telling me now? I'm not, I'm not following. So this looks yeah. more like a number than a list, but if you yeah. throw like, some stuff in. Oh, right, yes. I'm drunk. Uh, true. Uh, right, yes. That's clearly more like a list again. That's a lot more like a list. But yeah. it looked a lot like a number until you put the junk in there. Yeah. Right, yes. Uh, but the, the C function then must sort of hold on to this junk. Is that right? So we can do like for... So larger lists should probably look something along these lines. Uh, yes. Uh, because that means that you can pass in and C and what it would, would be to replace all the consists of the list, and you can pass in an n, and it would replace the empty list. Right. Yes. So we can make our cons function, and again, it's going to look sort of like the successor function. Yes. Uh, You're gonna need. But it needs to take like an additional argument. Right. So it's gonna need a head and a tail. Yeah. So. The successor function kind of only took the tail of the number, which is the number that is one smaller. Yes. Uh, but here we also want you know, to put some stuff in there. Right, yes. So we need to hold on to, to the head also. Yeah. Uh, and we'll do... So we're going to do the off by one implementation and again? Take a look at how successor did it. So successor kind of called the... sort of made a new number. Right. And then it called the original number and yes. passed in all the f's and x. Yeah. Uh, and then it threw in an, addi an additional app. All right, and now you're going to create a new cons. So we have thing. this tail bit, yeah. and we can replace all the cons with cons and the and the uh, the nil or whatever uh, yeah. with uh, with the n, right? List one. But that's just going to give you the old list back. Yeah. So if we try to like cons stuff. On to list one, we should get the wrong list. Yeah, is that just the list? 
Yeah, that's yeah. kind of the same as list one. This right, because you didn't really put anything in front. Yeah. Right. So now we need to put something in front. So the thing we did with numbers was really like threw in an, an, an additional f. Right. Uh, here we want to like throw in an additional c or cons. And uh, the head also, probably. And it should kind of hold on to the head. Right. So if we con some stuff onto this list. Now we have a larger list with stuff in front. Yeah. OK, excellent. And so we have some numbers lying around, so we can make a list of numbers. Yeah. And do like, uh, I think we have two. Did you define it like with letters or with numbers? Or, I'm sorry. Yeah. I defined two with letters and numbers, so that one oh, okay. work. Perfect. Uh, but we can try to be like mildly consistent. Uh, so it's two constant to one mm. constant to zero, maybe? Do we have zero? It's the zero and let's do ten. Right. And nil. Yeah. So it uh, shouldn't start with cons. It should start with cons. Yeah. I don't know how to program. Uh, cons. Yeah, looks all right now. I think. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Now, well, what was the list? It was two, one, zero, ten, or something. Can I just say that that's like correct? That's probably correct. So this is two, one, zero, and that looks like ten because there's a lot of Fs. Yeah, no yeah. one remembers which numbers we start with it anyway. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, so we call this list two. It has a bunch of numbers in right. it. Can you do like uh, list operations? Hopefully. On this list? Uh, yeah. That would kind of justify all the stuff we did. Yeah. Far at least. So, so what would be an interesting thing to do with the list? So we could add all the numbers together. Yeah, assuming that there are numbers in the list. I think we have included a quote here uh, by Oleg. Right. It says that faults are pretty cool. Um, yeah. All this, uh, the stuff we're doing with like kind of replacing consists. That's uh, or replacing successors and zeros. Yeah. Is uh, pretty much the fold right function, right? A language like Haskell. So okay, if you fold right a list, you can think of it as passing a function that you want. So anything you're doing with a number is basically folding yeah, over so the number itself. The number is its own fold function. Which is kind of mind blowing, but yeah, uh, I think we're just going to try to work with it and see how that might be. So. If you were to okay, this is fold, the fold. Make uh, some function using like let's say it's called folder. Uh, right. Then you could throw in a plus and a zero, and it would, in a sense, replace all the consists with pluses. Ah, right. And so the empty list with zero. And that would sum all the numbers in the list. Uh, so <laughs> our hope is that uh, this. These lists we have that our functions should be their own fold functions. Right. So you can in, you can just pass stuff into the list and it's going to nicely fold itself in a way. Hopefully, yeah. Yes. Uh, and that. Does what, anyone what remember which numbers we started? I think with? it was two, one, zero, and ten, so it should be thirteen. Is that correct? I don't know. And the. <coughs> yeah, I'm yeah. going to go with go with that. And it's not like anyone could tell if you or the computer was wrong, if it no, one of us did was something else. Maybe we were. No, you. Uh, both of us. Yeah, both of you. Yeah. Um, I know idea what this is. Uh, I think maybe it would be interesting to. Uh, uh, how would? Um, what about computing the length of a list? That should be sim simpler than. Yeah. So. Should take a list. And um, as usual, the thing we can do with list is a it, 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 uh, Yeah, so you, you pass something into the list, which would be now plus one. Is that right? No, almost. Almost correct, since but plus you need one to lose the jump, number, right? And the cons function needs to take like uh, two things. Yeah. Uh, we're not interested in the element of list we're looking at. We're just interested in sort of the number we built so far. Yeah, so we need a function that uh, throws away the junk here. and then returns the successor function. Is that correct? 
Yeah, something like that. So we could. So it's a function that kind of takes uh, whatever some element yeah. in the list and the the num number we have gotten so far. Yeah. So if it's the we start at zero. So if it's the first cons after right. zero, uh, and should be zero. Yeah. And we can take successor. Oh, this. Right. Um. I get to take the length of the list uh, list two, I suppose, which would be like four elements. Is that correct? Maybe. And One, it's two, four. Three, four. Yeah. Yep. Uh, well, what about um, since lists and numbers are so similar? Uh, maybe we could take the length of a number also because it it definitely has length in the same way that a list has. Yeah, that's a great idea. So if you have like the number ten. Right. Uh, we could do like a function that takes a number and, and does the successor of that number. Yeah. Uh, and start at zero. Right. So we should get. Right, and. Count matches. And we get 10 back. So the number 10 is 10 long. Interesting. I'm not sure, it was the most useful. <laughs> yeah, but I think it makes a point in some way. Um, right. Uh, how are we on time? Yeah, like four minutes. Four uh, minutes. Do you have something cool to show? We can do like one or two more like regular list functions. We can do sure. filter. Oh, filter. Uh, do we have all we need for filter? We have the booleans. We have the booleans. We don't have and. Oh, we like and. I have no idea if we need and. It's <laughs> should we try? I recall we need and. We'll see oh, what, okay. how it works. Out. So let's try. Filter should take a list, and we will apply the list since that's a function. Yeah. And. And then I suppose okay. What should we replace it with? It needs to take it? some predicate as well. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't think we need and at all. Um. So instead of cons, it should like take a function that takes a head and a tail. So right. Instead of the cons function, we will use a function that cons the element onto the tail, but yep. only if it satisfies the predicate. Right. Yes. So we'll do like if then else. Call the predicate. Yes. On this new head element. Right. And we will. So now that this would be the then branch, right? Then you would include it. So you'd cons. Yeah. So we cons it onto. And in the other case, you just use the tail. Yeah. And the empty list will be replaced with the empty list. Yes. So okay. we have like one function that returns a boolean. So we'll use that one. We call it zero. Oh, you could potentially filter out the zero from this list too. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, and this too, right? Right. Let's see how that works. I'm not sure this convinces anyone or anything. I don't think that's the correct list. Doesn't work at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we kept the zero, right? That's how right. filter works. That's. Uh, that's true. Kind of like. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Uh, again, we don't actually know how to program. Right, so uh, if you had not, we could do the opposite, of course. So a Boolean, and it should do like this, right? Switch it around somehow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so and then you could do not true, zero. Let's see, not true. Not true should be. Return false. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So filter not, let's see, lambda n. Not zero n. Yep. It should work. List two. And if we look, we get all the numbers and. And not the zero. And I think that's right. I also think we're pretty much out of time. Yeah. Uh, I guess we have time for one question, but not answering it. Yeah. <laughs> or answering it like. That's, that's the best kind of question, I think. Yeah. Uh, 
Okay, so we have uh, some time for next speaker to prepare and you can ask uh, one, two, maybe three questions. I see that you have used Emacs. What about those people that prefer them? Thank you. <laughs> mm, no. no. <laughs> 